Chris, we have former Canadian international Terry Dunfeld as our guest. Welcome, Terry. Thank you very much. I love the intro. That's better than the Safeway list of clubs. So I'll definitely uh, take that. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah, man. Glad to have you. Uh, you played quite a few years. Uh, you did four years with the uh, Canadian national team? Yeah, I, was, I started off, I was off and on probably close to a decade, but oh, wow. most of my caps came within sort of four or five years. So I was part of Stephen Hart's cycle and then a little bit of Benito Floro at the end. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, no, it was, it was brilliant. It was, there's nothing better than playing for your country. It was probably the pinnacle of my career. I was lucky enough to, which we'll probably get into a little bit later, play in the Premier League and, yeah. and that was amazing. But to, there's nothing like wearing that maple leaf on your shirt. It's unbelievable. And uh, Couldn't imagine. Yeah, and it even went to another level at one point where I, I was the captain and uh, it was, it was really? a pretty special moment. Wow. You were, were you at BMO for that game? No, we were we were actually playing Denmark down in the states. Okay. Uh, Colin Miller, the Edmonton manager, he right. uh, gave me the armband for a game, and D. Rowe was in the squad and put his arm around me and sort of passed it to me. It was a special nice. moment. Wow! I could imagine. I, I we get excited when we go to the Canadian matches yeah. uh, when they're here in Toronto and we're watching. So do the I. <laughs> so do I now. It's amazing. It's great. Yeah. But to be on the pitch and, like you said, to, to represent your flag and your country, that's. Uh, as for any sporting athlete yeah, sure. out there, uh, able to sure do it. Sure, it's important. Yeah, and not just me, everybody in the squad, they really embrace that call up. And yeah. we're, because there's not a huge pool, we're a close knit bunch of guys, and, and we really stick together. And it's not always been great times and high times, but those moments where we have had success, we, we really joy. And I don't think we're a million miles away from getting into that hex to the next stage, but. Um, it was you, close. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Unfortunately, one of my last games was the Honduras 8-1. We won't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll let that one go. Yeah, but yeah. that's painful. We'll yeah, it was a little bit Cross painful. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll pass that books. one. Edit that. But, yeah, uh, no. No, no we'll let them remind everybody <laughs> just the last ones. Uh, so we decided to go with something different for you, Terry. We yes. went with South Paw, South Paw Brewery's Heroes Beer. Yes. Now, this is brewed in Toronto. And uh, it's called. I thought you got heroes because you know. Well, that's exactly <laughs> no, no, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> you're here. That was too easy to segue. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna give this a shot. Yes, yeah, we are. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I've, well, I've already tried it. So. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go it's fresh. Your head. Start on us. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Well, you guys try it. I'll, I guess I'll say what I think. I think it's beautiful. It's a little bit similar to organic. It, it's kind of like a blondy kind of ale. It's not too hoppy and goes down really nice. Yeah. It does. They, uh, it is a 100% um, natural beer. Yeah. Now, I don't know what the difference is from 100% natural to organic. Right. Um, I, I think it does say on the can, or at least the website, that it is uh, no preservatives or additives. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's what <clears throat> makes it natural. Yeah, and they, they've been brewing this beer since, since November. 2015. Also, they're young. So they're very young. The company's only been around since 2015. So th this is their flagship beer. This is what they're going to nice. push out. They get it in LCBOs, select LCBOs across Ontario, obviously, almost at the country, but they do a lot of, in Ontario. They, they do a lot of charity work as well, and, and hence the name Heroes, I think, or at least how I read it, is the, uh, it, it's for the everyday heroes, the ones that don't get enough uh, uh, appreciation uh, your, your policemen, your firemen, your uh, paramedics, your EMS, well, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, everyday heroes. And, and, and I think they're branching, not just saying the heroes of, of, of like your emergency services and stuff, but people that are doing things on the street that could be everyday. Yeah. Or fans looking up to football players. They, they do look up to them as heroes. Yeah. CFC. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow is right. TFC. Here we go. Yeah, I know it's pretty special times. Uh, everyone keeps saying how much better the team is now. I don't know really how to take that. Yeah, no. <laughs> 37,000 people. Think, wow, this team's way better, aren't they? It's like, yeah. No, they're, they're great. And uh, I was fortunate enough to come back and be part of the team on the media side of things at the start of the year. And You looked at the pieces that the team... Uh, we're bringing in with just MLS, MLS experience has been so important to go around your Javinkos, your Bradleys, your um, Altidores. So players like Betashore, 
Uh, Phenomenal. Clint player. Irwin. Um, Drew Moore. Yeah. Drew Moore. We, Will Johnson. Yeah. Players that really I know I think we could list the entire team. Yeah, better. pretty much. But once you put those pieces, yeah. you talk about your kind of your top players, but your next like four through ten have been so good. Yes, and and then I think the other players that you maybe wouldn't have expected to get so much from your Ben Wache Ruse, for example, would have player to talk about right now like how he stepped up in the summer scored yeah, the goal yeah. to put us into the final uh, you, know, you know it's been Toe St. Rick it's a mid-season pickup who's probably been our only kind of soul scar some of his appearances off the bench have been incredible his pace when defenders are tired is almost unplayable yes uh, and a good Canadian boy yeah yes, good exactly. Canadian Cooper what a pickup yes. he's been yes. so, uh, great. I've kind of Gone off in on my own tangent there, but no, but no the team, the teams. That's what we see as fans. Is these players. And then the other thing that's so special about this team that that I've sort of picked up on is if you look at the core group of players, all those players I've mentioned, their names are, I mean, sorry, their ages are twenty six to maybe thirty. Yeah. So they're still all in their prime. We, if if I know there's the expansion draft and the salary cap in this league, but if you can keep all these pieces together, you can. We could do the, what the Galaxy did for three, four years and really yeah. dominate this league. Totally agree. In I, fact, one of the questions we asked Bill Manning last week uh, before the game was with it being the cap league, would he be able to keep this team together? And uh, all things are pointing to a few tweaks here and there, but you've got it right there. The core is, is definitely there. And the young guys... Uh, we haven't seen them in the playoffs, but they helped get us to the playoffs. Absolutely, with the with the not, I'm going to say the older guys, but the the more experienced guys out in international duty and and injuries, they came in and stepped up. Like Alex Bono was a prime example for yeah. sure. No, Jordan Hamilton, yeah, uh, Mobabuli, yeah, they were I mean, awesome. Uh, there's there's nice. some uh, Jay Chapman. There's some yep. great talents, younger talent learning from these experienced guys. Yeah, and it, it was a bold decision from Greg Vanny to give these guys an opportunity when they were trusted upon. He could have used more experienced players mm-hmm. and put them out of position and, and played them in roles where they were uncomfortable, but he really trusted in some of these young Canadian players coming through, some young American players, and he was rewarded for it. All right, so I'm going to take it away from today's TFC, and uh, I want to ask you... Your high, your career highlight, be it, because I mean, you, you played, uh, you, you started uh, very, quite young, uh, you moved to England, um, and ended up in the Manchester City um, set up yeah, in the youth right. program and then moved yeah. your way through. Uh, so, I mean, you've got Man City, you in Canadian teams and MLS teams, you have Vancouver and uh, Toronto FC. I'm almost a trivia question. I just needed the impact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Italian or French. <laughs> I think I got, tried to kick them too much, so I go okay. ahead. <laughs> Everyone, you know, uh, you always joke about your own career in, in person, but I mean, you've done it. You, you've done the premiership. Uh, uh, you've done uh, uh, one or two obscure countries in there too, but yeah, yeah. no, I, I was very lucky. No, you've done I had a stuff. good run. What's the highlight of your career now that it's come to? Yeah, you know, it's hard. the end. If it is the end, yeah, you know? I mean, probably touched on it at the beginning because you didn't never know. I watched Rudy last night, so you never know. But there might be a comeback. <laughs> come, back, uh, come get come back, King. Yeah, really. Um, I mean, Captain in Canada, that was incredible. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that was an amazing. Even though we got spanked four 0 and then all of a sudden you're at halftime and you're just like somebody else wants this. It's an absolute ball and chain. But uh, no, I, I think my debut, I guess, for Manchester City at 18, playing against Chelsea in the Premier League and. It was nuts at the time. You just you go through the academy and you're prepared for this, and you don't really think about it. But thinking back now, and you're running on past players like Zola and Hasselbank, yeah. and I'm picking up Desai on set pieces, and you're just like, well, this guy just wow. won a World Cup, and you're like, this ain't man, just take it easy on me. <laughs> uh, some of my moments for Toronto were incredible. Uh, scoring a header against my old team Vancouver in the last minute that's my favorite moment yeah I think that's probably my favorite moment because I came back to my hometown team Vancouver sorry to cut you off that was just uh, to ask what it was like to play there yeah I I should should have probably started that the game for Vancouver against Toronto in my hometown team and I never thought Vancouver would have an MLS team like they did in the inaugural season of the MLS there was almost 30,000 at 
we weren't at BC Place at the time. We were at Empire Stadium, and we played TFC, right. and uh, I scored the second goal and nice. jumped in the crowd. And I probably played a little bit too well because I got traded here less than a year <laughs> later. But it was awesome to you know sit there in front of my friends and family. And I think I needed like 80 tickets. It cost me a month's wages that wow. game just in tickets. But it was total. I couldn't get make my grandma buy a ticket. But it was that that was special. And then to come here and at the back, you know, you always when you play against your old team, you, you always play with the skip to your step, and yeah. you have that. I, you know, I'll show them. And I played these guys. Yeah. I played with these guys. Yeah. I know how they, they play. They should. Bob Leonard is. He should have never traded me. We're all good now. Bob and I spoke yeah. yeah. since. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, cheers, gents. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Terry. Cheers. Fiverr. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>